you can have your body. Let's go briefly, briefly to Ezekiel, the 18th chapter, 19 verse. There we find the text that is raining for this hour. chapter says, yet you say, why should the son not bear the guilt of the father? Because the son has done what is lawful and right, and have kept all of my statutes and observed them. He shall surely live. Yes. The soul who sins shall die. The son shall not bear the guilt of the father, nor the father bear the guilt of the son. I feel like God already. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon himself. The wickedness of the wicked shall be upon himself. Mm -hmm. But if a wicked man turns from all his sins which he has committed and keeps all of my statutes and does what is lawful and right, he shall surely live. He shall not die. None of the transgressions which he has committed shall be remembered against him. Because of the righteousness which he has done. He shall live. Do I have any pleasure at all that the wicked should die? Say the Lord God. And not that he should turn from his ways and live. <clears throat> but when a righteous man turns away from his righteousness and commits iniquity and does according to all of the abominations that the wicked man does, shall he live? All the righteous which he has done shall be not remembered because of the unfaithfulness of which he is guilty and the sin which he has committed because then he shall die. Yet you say, the way of the Lord is not fair. Hear now, O house of Israel, O house of Oemai, O house of Empire. Hear now, is it not my way which is fair? Your ways which are not fair. When a righteous man turns away from his righteousness, commits iniquity and dies in it, it is because of the iniquity which he has done that he dies. Again, which a wicked man turns away from the wickedness which he commits and does what is lawful and right he preserves himself alive because he considers and turns away from all of the transgressions which he committed he shall surely live and he shall not die yet the house of Israel says the way of the Lord is not fair O house of Israel is it not my way which is fair and your ways which are not fair. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. neighbor. Yeah, look at him. I want you to look at him. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. neighbor. Yet. Yes. I, live. I live. Come on, give God some praise. Come on, give God some praise. Oh, look at the way 
neighbor on the other side. I say neighbor. Yes. I live. Come on and give God some praise. The greatest <coughs> commodity that we have on earth is life. Life is more worth more than silver. It's worth more than gold, platinum, money, relationship, friendship. Fellowship. The most precious thing that we have on earth is life. Yes, yes. Yes. I have never figured out. Y'all just work with me for me. Y'all work with me. How something that can be so in abundance be worth so much. Everywhere you look, you see life. You see it when the trees grow. You see it when the bird flies. You hear it at night and the possums in your garbage. And something's out there. You smell it when the skunk runs across the yard and leaves his presence. You recognize it when a baby cries. Yes. You say that for life. Life is the most recognizable thing on the face of the earth. Right. But yet. It is also the most precious thing. There is nothing that you can put before that's more precious than life. But something puzzles me because even though it is the most precious thing on earth, sometimes it is treated so cheap. Mm, help me, Holy Ghost. People have sold life for 30 pieces of silver. Uh, some folks has given away their life for a drug. They exchange daily, weekly, their life for a little white powder in a bag. Whether the bag be white, green, brown, they exchange life for that. Some people exchange life merely over an argument. People have been murdered, killed, beaten down, beat to death over an argument over shoes, mm -hmm. over a coat. You don't believe me, just go on the internet. Look at the news. You hear about somebody being killed over some tennis shoes. Just some folks have killed over a name. Some people even in the church and outside the church have murdered over and for a position. Amen. Life is so abundant that oftentimes we just do not respect them. It's so bad that oftentimes we'll look at one another. And we're so used to seeing life in somebody that we don't respect the life that's in them. It seems like only when they pass. Mm -hmm. Help me, Lord. Mm -hmm. Then we come to the realization how precious sometimes that life was. 
We got people in our midst. We don't recognize them. We don't respect them. And we don't respect the life that's in them. Because we have them every day. Some of us holler and scream at our children, our loved ones. Talk to them any kind of way. Yes. Amen. Amen. Treat them any kind of way. Because we don't respect the life that's in them. It's only when that life seemingly is taken. Yes. Seems like everybody comes to an attention about life. I can't understand why folks don't celebrate life every day. Amen. I don't understand why you get up. I want y'all to listen to me. Shout it, praise God, and I listen. And why we get up depressed. The fact that you are alive means that you have the chance for things to get done. Come on, give God some praise. Come on, let's get good. Come on, give God some praise. Many of us wake up and go through the entire day. The entire day. Upset. Worrying over things. Come on, come on. Depressed and complaining. Come on, Chief. And you're breathing and you're teeming with life. Come on, say breathing. I'm breathing. breathing. Yeah, you're you're teeming with life. And long as there's life in your body. I've already preached this about You have opportunity to make things better. Yes. Amen. Come on and give God some praise. Come on and give God some praise. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, because I'm alive. I'm alive. Don't 